Hey there Dev Squad, Ryan here. In the last video, we created a game instance which keeps track of server information between levels and holds logic for joining and creating servers. In today's video, we're going to be creating the menu for hosting servers. We'll be creating two UI widgets and adding functionality to the host server widget. Let's get started. So first, we're going to create a new folder inside of our game folder. We're going to name this UI. And inside of UI, we're going to create two new widgets. So the first one that we're going to create is online menu. And the second one is going to be host server. These two UI widgets we created are a type of blueprint used to store user interface data and functionality. If you'd like to learn more about how to use these UI widgets, go check out the UI tutorial series on the Virtus Learning Hub. So let's go ahead and open up online menu. Now we're not going to do a lot inside of online menu today. We mainly just need to get one function set up. So let's go ahead and go to the graph and get started. We want to create a new custom event. And we're going to name this hide. And what hide is going to do is set visibility and set that visibility to hidden. All right, and that's actually all we need to do inside of our online menu. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Now over in your host server, go ahead and click and open this up. This is the widget that we're gonna be focusing the most on today. So let's go ahead and get the layout started. The first thing that we need is an overlay. We're going to drag this out here. And we need a vertical box inside of the overlay. And the reason we're using a vertical box here is because we need to align elements like our server name in a list format. A vertical box will align all the attached widgets into this format for us. And inside our vertical box, we want a couple different things. The first one is a text. Second one is going to be a text box. The third is going to be another text box. The fourth is going to be a combo string. And the last one is going to be a button. Inside this button though, we do need one thing. And we're just going to go ahead and throw a text inside of it. Okay. Now that we've got everything kind of set up, what we need to do is align our overlay. So we're going to anchor this to the middle of the screen. We're going to set the size X to 500. And size Y to 300. We're going to set the position X to negative 250 and the position y to negative 150. All right, so now our overlay is correctly anchored and positioned. We're going to go over here to our vertical box, and we just want to make sure that this is horizontally aligned in the center. Okay. And next, we're going to change out this text block. This is just going to be a server settings just a title. The next one is going to be our server name. So we're just going to put default server into here. We'll also align that in the center. The next one is going to be our player count. We'll put five in there, five in there. And we're also going to center align that one. This combo box is going to be for our different levels. So we're just going to add three here really quickly. I'm going to do level one, level two. We'll actually do it with numbers. So level one, level two, and level three. Okay, and then for a selected option, we just want to put in level one. And last thing on this one, we're just going to center align it as well. 
And finally, moving on to our button, we want to type in host and change this just a little bit. We'll put that at 16. And then for a button, we're just going to horizontally align it in the center again. Okay, so now we can save, compile. The next thing that we're going to do is add a close button. So let's go ahead and put a button inside of our overlay, not the vertical box. And then click on our button, and we're just going to horizontally align to the right. That'll keep it up in the top right corner. And then inside this button, let's add a text, and we're just going to make this capital X. And then we can change the size of that. And let's go ahead and make it red. There we go. So now we're going to create the backend logic for this. So let's go ahead and move into our graph. And we're just going to delete these and create some new custom events. So let's create two custom events for right now. Let's do show and hide. Let's start with show. All show is going to do is set visibility right here. And then for an input, we're going to create new and then type in our online menu. Okay. And let's just type in online menu here. And then over this way, we're going to promote this to a variable and set this to our online menu ref. And the reason I'm doing this is because eventually this host menu will be inside of our online menu and we need a reference to it to be able to call back to that menu. So let's just compile and save. And let's move down to our hide. So hide is going to do something similar. It's going to set the visibility, but this time it'll be hidden. And then after that, I'm going to get a branch and make a check right here. This input is going to be called hide all. And if this is true, we want to grab a reference to our online menu ref and call that function hide. Now the reason we put this little bit in here is after your host UI tries to host, it won't automatically hide our online menu, so we need to do that manually. So now that we've completed that, we can go ahead and save, compile, and we're going to move on to the next thing. But we need to go over into our designer and grab some references to a couple of events. So let's grab button. 132, and we'll go through and rename these in the next video. So unreleased, and we want the unreleased for our host button as well. And over to the right, we're going to get game instance. And then we're going to cast to our game instance. Okay, now we just want to do an is valid check. And then if it is valid, we want to get owning player, get controller ID, and then get player controller. From here, we're going to do another is valid check to make sure that our player controller is valid. So after the is valid, we want to hide. There it is. So we're just going to use this hide function, and we're going to make sure that we're hiding all. 
The last node we're going to use is the host server function that we created in the last video. We can call this from our game instance. So let's go over here, back off of this, and type in host server. Let's look this up. And there are a few things that we need to do prior to setting up our server settings. So let's just hook up our player controller and then let's get started on creating functions that will return the values that we need. Also, we can just go ahead and make off of this really quick. So we need to create functions for public connections, getting our map name, and then getting the server name. So over here, functions, let's just create one called get selected map. Let's do get server name and get selected player count. So starting with get selected player count, we need to go into our game instance and we need to add a variable. Let's go into our game instance, let's create a new variable, and let's name this max players. Make it an integer, and then save and compile, and then make the value whatever you would like. I'm going to set mine to 5 for right now. Okay, we can navigate back to our host server function, and inside of here, we now want to get game instance. Pass to our multiplayer game instance. And then inside of here, we can get our new variable max players. And now what we're going to do is we're going to clamp the value from our players box. So let's go back to our designer. Click this one. It is 205. We can get 205 get text and then we can do a to string and then from the to string we can put this value into our value and then we want our max players to be max and what this clamp is going to do is just make sure that no matter what they put inside this value it will never go above your max players. And then for minimum, let's just go ahead and set two. And then we need a return node, so let's just click here. And on output, let's press new parameter. And let's make this an integer. And let's name the output count. Okay. We can hook this up to our return value. Move this over a little bit, and we are finished with this function. The last thing that we want to do is click on this right here and then make sure this is a pure function. We can save and compile that. Let's move over to our server name. So all server name is going to do is grab our text from the server name box, which is right here, 111. Get this, get text. And then to string. Here we go. And then we need another return value. So do a string and type in string. Okay, then we can hook this up. Make sure this is pure as well. And finally, we're going to do our selected map. So select map is just going to be, let's find our combo box, it's right here. And then get selected option. Then we need our return, which is just going to be our string. So output. And let's just make this, oh, it's already a string, that's fine. Let's save and compile. So really quickly, we're going to do something a little bit special here. Um, if you look over into 
our settings right here for our combo string, you can see that level one is kind of right up next to the number, same with level two and level three. And the way that we can actually get around this and make the user see a space in between, but load the level without the space, because you can't use spaces in level names, we can go over to this and we're just going to replace. And all we need to do is put a space in here. So it'll replace all spaces with no value. And that'll make sure that when it tries to load the level, it won't load level space one, it'll load just level one. We can save and compile. And that's all we need to do for our functions. Let's just make sure that this is pure as well. Then we can close out of these and go back to our host function. Now we want to get selected map, plug in that value. On public connections, we're going to get selected player count. So we're going to add a few more settings to our server just to make sure that other players know what our server is doing and how it's acting. So let's drag off of this server settings right here and type in make array. Now the three things that we're going to do is we're going to display our server name, the map name, and the game name. And the reason that we're displaying our game name is because right now our project is using the testing ID 480. So it will pull up every server that's using that ID and we want to be able to filter our games out. So we can just make string right here. And we're going to copy this two times. Okay. And we also want to add two pins to our make array. Alright, now the first key is going to be game name. And then you can input your game name here. I'm just going to put Virtus test. And the key in this one is going to be map. And then the value will just plug in our get selected map. And the last one is going to be server name the value we can just get our server name now and plug that in okay so now that we've completed our host function let's go down and finish our close menu button really simple all we're going to do is call our hide and then leave hide all unchecked okay now we can save and compile because we are done so that's the end of the video. I hope you guys learned something new. In the next video, we'll be creating some basic levels as well as making sure our project is set up for server map transitions. Thanks for watching, stay awesome, and keep creating.